Welcome back. This is our fifth lesson of session number one of Machine Learning Zoom Camp. And we will talk about the modeling step. And we will talk about the process of selecting the best model, which is called the model selection process. In the previous lesson, we talked about uh, this modeling step, right? This is the step where the actual um, machine learning happens. So in this step, we try different models. So we already have the data extracted on the previous step. So we try different models and our goal is to choose the best model. So here you don't need to worry what logistic regression decision tree neural network mean. We will cover them later in uh, other, uh, in other uh, sessions, but they are different models. Some of them might work well on this particular problem. problem. Some of them might not work well. And what we need to do is try some of them and see what works best. And for that, we need to have a way of doing this. And this is called the model selection process that we will talk about. So if you think about uh, the way we use a model for our spam example. So let's say now it's uh, July and uh, we train a model, right? So we take our uh, capital X, we take Y, we produce our model G, right? And then we deploy the model in August. And in August, we take uh, the model G that we trained on the data from July and before that. And we apply this model to spam messages and it produces some score. For example, that this email, uh, the probability that this email is spam is 70%, right? So this is how we use a model in practice. And when evaluating the model, we want to sort of mimic this, uh, this way of using it. So we want to, to see how well our model will perform on data it hasn't seen. The model from July didn't see the data from August. It only saw the, the data from July. Right? And in July, we don't know how well uh, the model will perform. So what we want to do is we want to do something similar. Of course, we cannot go back in the future and uh, take the data from August when we are in July. But we can do something uh, that is quite close enough. So we can take the entire data set that we have and we can take a small part of this data set, let's say 20% of this, and we hide this. So we take this data, put it away, and pretend this data doesn't exist, right? So we take the remaining 80%, right? And we use this 20% uh, for training only, right? And the 20% we don't use for training. So this is sort of the data from August, and this is sort of the data from July, in a way, right? So we kind of hide this data. And this data set, we call it validation data set. So this data set, is not used in training. So let's say we have this training data set, right? Train, and the, we have the validation data set, right? So what we do is uh, we need to extract this feature matrix, right? This uh, capital, capital X, and we do this from the training data. So we have the X, we also have the Y, also coming from the training data. And we train our model G only using this X and Y, right? So we have a G. Then from the validation data set, we extract another X that model, mo the model didn't see during training. And we can call this X, X validation, X uh, V. And again, we can do this uh, Y V. Right, so this is the target variable from the validation data set and the X variable from the validation data set. And we have our X, oh, uh, we have our G, the model that we trained on the training data set. So we take the G and we apply it to the validation data set and we get some predictions. Uh, we can call, call them just Y hat, right? So these are the predictions. What we do next is we need to compare this y hat predictions with the actual values, 
So this is our spam. This is not spam. And the way it looks in practice is, uh, so let me just insert a new page here. So the way it looks in practice is, uh, so, I, so we have these uh, predictions, y hat, and we have the actual uh, target variable, right? And for um, this, uh, so actual could be one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So this is spam, not spam, spam, not spam. Uh, spam, not spam, right? And for this, uh, yeah, remember that the output of this thing is a probability. So it can be 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, uh, I don't know, 0 0.9, 0 0.6, right? This is the probabilities that will later convert to, uh, to predictions. So for this one, it's greater than uh, 0 0.5. So for this, uh, we predict one uh, spam. For this one, we also predict spam. For this one, we predict spam. For this one, we predict not spam. This is spam and this is spam again. So now we can see, so these are our predictions and this is our target variable. And we can see in how many cases this is correct. So this is correct, this is not correct, 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 not correct. So actually in four out of six cases, it's correct. Um, so this is 66%. Uh, right, so in this case, the, the model we have is 66% accurate. So we can do this, uh, let's say for um, logistic regression, we do this and we see that our model is uh, correct. Uh, like let's say it was our logistic regression, so it has 66% accuracy. Then we take a decision tree, which is a different um, model family. It's uh, like, like the G here and G here are different Gs, like different functions. And uh, for decision tree, maybe accuracy is 60%, right? So then we take another model, can be random forest, right? And we see that uh, maybe it's, 67% correct. And we take a neural network and neural network can be maybe 80% correct. For example, this, I just made up these numbers. And we see that uh, this model neural network has the best accuracy. So we select this model as our best model. So this is how it works, right? How, however, there could be a problem, right? Um, I don't know what happened here. Like it's supposed to be like, let's uh, like this one think uh, with a uh, heart, this is spam. And this mail is uh, like a usual mail. So let's remove this. So there is a problem with this approach. So, and I want to illustrate this uh, problem with uh, like a made up example, but I think it's a good illustration. Um, let's say our model is not a logistic regression model. It's not a neural net, it's a coin, right? So we take uh, our 20% of data, which happen to be these five emails. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, and what we do is now we flip a coin and if uh, a coin um, uh, lands on heads, we say it's spam. If it heads on tails, if it lands on tails, then we say it's not spam, right? Very simple model. And uh, we take uh, one euro, or the first model, and uh, yeah, we make a prediction for our validation data set, right? So the prediction is, uh, so this is actually spam, not spam, Spam, not spam, not spam. So the model says that the first one is spam, the second one is spam, the third one is not spam, not spam, and spam. So it's, uh, yeah, so it got only one right, right? So it's 20% correct. Then we take uh, one American dollar and we do the same. So it says spam, not spam, not spam not spam, spam. 
right? And then it got uh, one, uh, two, right? So 40% correct. Then we take uh, one Polish Zloty and uh, one Polish Zloty uh, gives the sequence. So G, G, uh, good, good, uh, spam, spam, uh, spam, right? So one correct, uh, yeah, 20% correct. Then we take one ruble. So it can be um, good, not good, good, not good, right? So then it's uh, correct in, um, yeah, it got only one right, right? And then we take Ukra Ukrainian Hrivna and then uh, Grivna just produces the exact sequence, right? It just got lucky, right? So, and then it's 100% correct. And then, uh, so Hrivna here got really lucky. And we say, okay, like we see, we look at the numbers. So like the dollars are quite good, um, like euros, uh, zlotis, and troubles are very bad at predicting uh, spam. Hrivna is the best one. It has 100% accuracy for predicting our spam messages. But we all know that this is, this is really random, right? So we cannot really control the sequence. It, this uh, this coin just got particularly lucky and it managed to produce the same sequence as we had in the validation data set. And while this is a two example, the exact same thing can happen with a real model. So a model can just get lucky. So maybe let's say this is a, a neural net and this is, I don't know, uh, decision tree, this is logistic regression, I don't know, this is random forest and this is, uh, I don't know, gradient boosting. Right. different kind of models. And neural net just got lucky at predicting this particular part of the data set. So this particular uh, subset of our data, it just happened to, um, to do really well on this, just by pure chance, right? And if we take another part, if we take another 20% and apply the same model, then the results would be totally different. So if we take Ukrainian Grivna and apply to a different 20%, probably it's very unlikely that we again will manage to predict it with 100% accuracy. So this um, in statistics, this is called multiple comparison problems. When we perform the same comparison many, many times, so when we use many, many different models and evaluate them against the same validation data set, one of the models can get particularly lucky for no reason, just by chance. It gets lucky and it produces a good result. This can happen with machine learning a lot, right? So because at the end, these methods are probabilistic. So I think like this can happen that a model just gets lucky. To guard against cases like this, what we do instead of holding out just one data set, we actually hold out two data sets. So let's say this is our data set. So we uh, take 20% of this data for validation purposes. We take 20% more for testing purposes. And we take the remaining 60%. And by the way, this 60, 20, 20, this is not set at all. It can be any value. And the remaining 60% we take for training, right? So what we have is we have three not overlapping subsets of our data, training data, validation data, and test data. And what we do next is we hide this data set. So we just put it away. We forget about this. And we do the model selection in the same way as I described it previously. So we take our X, we take our Y, we train our model G, then we take our X validation, Y validation, we apply G and we calculate all this accuracy and so on. And here at this step, we select the best model, right? So could be, let's say, neural network. So we did all this exercise of selecting the best model. And then next, to make sure that this model didn't get particularly lucky on this validation set. What we do next is we apply this neural network 
to the test data set. So we take the test data set, we again extract the, our feature matrix or target variable from the test data set, and we again do an extra round of validation on the test data set. We just want to make sure that um, uh, our model, the model we think is best, is actually the best one. And this is how it works. Okay, so let's say uh, for our example, so we had uh, logistic regression, we have a decision tree, we have random forest, and we have a neural net. So um, I think this one was 66% correct. And this may be 60, I don't remember. I think this was 67 and this was 80. So we, we see, okay, this neural network is the best one, right? So what we do next is we take the neural network only. We, we forget about this. And we take our test data set. And now we apply the neural network to the test data set and get a number. And we see, let's say the number is, it says the accuracy is 79%. And then we see, okay, we have 80% here, we have 78% uh, here. It's very close, it's reasonably close. And we conclude that this model behaves quite well. So this process is called the model selection process. And this is one of the most important things in machine learning to be able to actually set this up. And uh, this is quite simple. Like as you see, all we need to do is we need to split our data set into three parts. So let me just, uh, so first one is uh, split the data set, split the data set. So this is our first step, right? Um, then what you do next is you train a model, then you um, validate the model using the validation data set. If you remember, we have three data set. So the first one is train, then we have validation and we have test data set. So we split it into three parts. We train our model on training data set. We apply the model to the validation data set. And we see, uh, we record what is the uh, accuracy or how good it is. And we see that for logistic regression, it's 66%, right? And we repeat these uh, two steps, uh, three and uh, two and three, how many times we need. So we can repeat it for many, many different models. And then we will have uh, this table like uh, on the previous slide, for different models, uh, different uh, values, right? So, and then what happens next? We did this uh, for many different models and we select the best one. Select the best. So we have that. And then we, using the best value, the best model we have from the previous step, we uh, apply it to the test data. And this is our, like we check if everything is good. And this is the model selection process, right? So it's a six step process, uh, split the data into three, uh, three parts, to do the model selection on the validation data set, and then at the end, make sure that uh, the model didn't get particularly lucky uh, by testing it one more time. Um, usually uh, like here between a four and uh, five. So let me just uh, create another slide. Um, so we have this 100% of our data, right? So we have 20% uh, for uh, training and we have 20, we have 20% for uh, validation. So train, validation, test. So we train a model here, right? And we use only 60%. And um, use 60% of training, we validate, and then we do the testing. And here, this data set is kind of, this part of the data is kind of wasted. So we only use it for checking. So what we can actually do is instead of just throwing this away completely, what we can do is we first 
we first do the model selection process as usual, but then we take uh, we take the training data, we take the validation data set, and combine them into one big train train data. Train. Then we train a model, like model G, and then we apply it for testing data. So in this case, we will not just throw away with the validation data, we will use it for training a new model G, right? Which should be a bit better because it uses more data for training. And then we check it against the test data set and see, okay, this model indeed didn't get just like on the validation set, it was actually good. And this way we don't throw away validation uh, set, we use, still use it for our final model. So this was a bit theoretical uh, introduction. And uh, in the next section, session, we actually will use all these things in practice. We will code everything. But to be able to do this, we need to know some uh, tools. So we use Python for that. And in Python, there are some libraries that we use, uh, like NumPy, Pandas, and other libraries. So they are pretty important. So before we move to the practical practical part of uh, applying machine learning, we will cover libraries like NumPy in the next lesson, uh, and we will cover uh, Pandas in the lesson after that. <laughs>